In the previous video, we were doing a fitting back to our dress rooms or our clients. Now that we have the results from that fitting, what we want to do is we want to go into our flat pattern drafting and make all the adjustments. Let's go ahead and start with the front pockets now. All right, so now that we did our preliminary fitting with our client, here on the top pocket opening, I have a red mark and I did it on both sides. What I want to do is eventually on my pattern pieces, I need to have a notch where this is the under bag liner, this is the top bag, and I need to have a notch where the top bag is finally going to rest here on this waist seam. Now at this point what I can do is I can take this pocket apart so we can get in here and we need to accurately measure from the side seam over to this new mark along the top of the under bag. So here I'm just checking from the side seam, measuring nice and flat along the under bag. I'm getting four and a quarter. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to check the same thing on this side pocket as well. So here's my side seam. And I'm going to measure this totally flat. And I'm getting the same thing, four and a quarter. Now what I can do with that measurement is I'm taking out my under bag piece. We're going to start here at the side seam and we're going to measure over the distance and put a notch on this pattern piece. So again, I'm ignoring all of the seam allowance and I'm starting here at the side seam, measuring along the top over here, four and a quarter. Now for you, obviously your measurement is going to be different from mine. So make sure you're recording what is your measurement from the side seam back to that notch. All right, so like I was saying for the plus size people, as you're moving the top pocket along the waistline, you might find that you're getting too much volume here. But remember, we had added some extra volume down at the bottom by making the side seam of the main body and the top pocket different than the side seam of the under bag. So if you need to, if you're getting too much volume into the pocket, you can come back to that original side seam that we had here on the main body. And you can decide to either go all the way back to just having the original side seam that matches the back, and it also matches this, or somewhere in between, just depending on how little or how much volume you wanna take away. And then make sure that you do the exact same change to the top bag piece as well. Now, if you were gonna make a change to the side seam of the top bag and the main body, you need to do that now, and then come back to the next step that we're about to do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape this under bag down to the tabletop, and then I'm gonna tape the top bag on top of that so we can start working on the shaping for the pocket. So I taped the under bag to the tabletop, and now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to match up the side seam notch of the under bag and this bottom corner down here. And I'm going to tape this down up here at the top. And then I also want to tape it down here at the bottom. So again, the under bag is taped to the table. The top bag is taped here at the side seams, and the notches match. Now what we're saying is, this point right here on the under bag should line up with that notch. So I'm going to start to move the under bag over to match up with that notch. Also I need the top edges of my pattern pieces to match.
Once I have that in place, I want to tape the top bag down to the tabletop so it doesn't move. Now once we have the new location here taped down, as well as following all along the side seams, you'll notice that the bottom edge of the pockets no longer match. And we always knew this was going to happen and that's why we only drew this one in lightly in pencil. What we're going to do now is the top bag, we need to clip some of the seam allowance so this pocket will lay flat. So just put some clips inside of the seam allowance and then you'll notice that the pocket is laying flat and you can start to see the new shaping for this, the edge out here. Now take out your blue color pencil and what you can do is if you have your hand smooth all along the blue from the top bag and you come over here to the under bag you can see where the two are no longer lining up. So I'm going to fold the top one right along the blue here and underneath I can start to draw what would be the new location. Then eventually when you get down into the curve it's just going to blend right back in with the, the original. Alright, so once you've figured out your new line on here, what we want to do is we want to darken that in using our tools. And again, for now, let's just do this lightly in pencil. So here's my new line. I'm going to erase the old one. And then down here, I'm going to blend it with my curve. All right, so I've redone the shaping here. I erased the old line. Now again, I need to have this point right here is matching to my new notch, and that's my custom fit in the waist. And I also need to make sure that this blue line remains totally flat along the tabletop for the full distance. Now once I've done this correctly, if you look through the layers, you'll see that the top bag is a little bit higher and the under bag is a little bit lower. So they're not matching at the top. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take an average of the two. So we're going to split the difference. So the top bag, I'm going to make it come down halfway back towards the under bag. And for the under bag, I'm going to make it go up halfway towards the upper bag. So again, I'm splitting the difference between the two. Now, once we've done that, we need to change four pattern pieces. We need to change the top bag, the main body, the under bag, and the front facing. Also, when we make this change right here, we need to maintain the exact same curve that we had from the waist. To find this curve, what we're going to do is come back here to the side seam at the top of the bag and circle this. This is going to be zero. And then you can see over here I have my new mark, which is half of the height from the top bag. Now I want to come in here and I want to find my original curve that I have in blue. And then I'm going to pivot from zero to that new location. Now that I have my new curve, I need to put some white out on that color pencil from the under bag. Once I have my new curve on there, I made sure to get my grain arrows, my edges, and my notch back in here. Now I want to translate the same curve to the facing piece as well.
So now I have the same curve here on my front pocket facing. Now for these two pieces, since we changed the curve going upwards, we need to add some more paper to this so we can also add a little more seam allowance. Now that I've added more paper to the top so I can have finished my seam allowance, I'm going to go ahead and cut away all this excess paper. For the front pocket facing and the under bag, we added a little bit to the top edge and rechanged the curve. Now here for the top bag as well as the main body, we're taking away some of that top curve. Now I'm going to put the main body back on here and I want to get that curve again. What I'm going to do is, to make sure I'm getting the correct curve, I'm going to put this on top of the under bag. I'm matching my notch down here, my notch right there, and my new location right here. Now for this new location, I need to go all the way back to zero here from the under bag. Again, I'm making sure that my ruler is on the exact same curve that it was for the under bag. And I can come in here and I can get the curve for the top bag that matches back to zero right here. Now I'm going to leave all this tape down so I can bring the main body into place. Again, I'm going to line up the side seams and the notch I want to tape this down so it does not move. And the main body, I'm going to have this top edge of the pocket matching this top edge of the pocket. And I'm following my seam allowance from the top bag underneath here. So I'm getting the exact same edges matched up together. And then I can see my new curve from underneath. And I'm going to get the exact same curve all the way through. So I'm matching up the same location on my very form curve. It's zero right here from the under bag. This is the new curve we're doing. Now in this instance, we're traveling all the way to center front. And center front needs to be square for at least half of an inch. So I'm going to pull this away. I'll bring in my ruler. And I'm finding that curve blending into a straight line at center front. Okay, let's double check our pieces together. So here on the front main body, we had changed the top edge curve, made sure it's square at center front. We readjusted our seam allowance and cut off the excess paper. For the top bag, we made the same change to the top, fixed the seam allowance, cut off the extra. And then we turned this down into here to just half inch seam allowance, cut everything off. And if there was any little um, areas where you had clipped into the pattern piece, we taped it all down so it's nice and flat. For the under bag piece, we changed this top edge. We needed to add some paper to it and add some seam allowance and cut off the excess paper. We did the same thing to the front pocket facing and these match perfectly. Now on the under bag, we have the red notch, which matches up to the top pocket opening. We need to make sure that red notch is here on the front pocket facing as well.
And since that's a notch, let's go ahead and draw it all the way into the seam allowance. And do this for both pieces. Now come back here to your waistband. And the distance from the side seam to center front has changed because we adjusted our pocket. If you were doing menswear or kidswear and you made no adjustment at all, you're totally fine. But for the rest of us, we did some kind of a tweaking. We need to come in here and change this distance. What we're going to do is we don't need to worry about the facing or the top bag. We want the under bag and our main body. Let's take the under bag piece and we're going to tape it down to the tabletop. So I taped it down right here and again right here. Now for the front main body, I want to come down in here and I'm going to line up the notch at the side seam and I'm also lining up the side seams. And I want to tape it up high and somewhere down low so nothing is going to move. Now we can take the top edge of the pocket opening and match it back to this notch on the under bag. And as we match up those two locations, we're also matching all along the top edge here. Then I can tape this down so it'll stay in place. Now for the waistband, it already fits great from center back to the side seam. We need to check it here from the side seam back to center front. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk these right sides together. So I'm going to take my waistband, flip it over, and I'm going to start here at the side seam. And I'm going to walk my waistband along with this new waist that we just adjusted. And you should find that yours now has a new center front. And basically the new center front is coming up a little bit short. So when we closed this heading in that direction, we're basically making the waistband slightly shorter. We're making this fit just a little bit tighter up on your waist area. So let's go ahead and adjust this now according to that new mark. Here's a quick tip on making a notch go away. So I put a piece of tape here from the front, and now when I flip it over, this is the sticky side of my tape. I'm going to put some white out right across that notch, and I'll close this piece of tape on top of it, and now it disappeared. So I erased my old center front, and underneath here I can see my mark from my new center front. I want to make sure that it's totally square. I'll label this CF for center front, and then I'll adjust my seam allowance. We need the one inch seam allowance, and I'll cut off my extra paper. Basically, this extra piece of paper, that's how much we moved the pocket over, was about that amount. Now, I know making all of these little adjustments to the pattern pieces is kind of a lot of work, and sometimes it feels like you're chasing your tail going back and forth. But the key thing is, is this right here, what we just did, this is what makes your custom jeans fit you perfectly. Also, this is why you'll notice when you buy jeans from one brand, you love the fit, and you'll get the exact same size jeans in a different brand, and you don't like the fit, is because whoever their fit model was, they made it custom fit to them, and then they went into production like that. And that's why certain jeans you love, and certain jeans you don't like at all. Now, we finished up all these pattern pieces. On the muslin mock-up, I'll show you how we're going to put it back together so we can finish doing the mock-up. One last thing I want to do is down here at the ankles. So right now we have this where it's continuously tapering in and in and in. 
But if you were to do it like a double rolled hem, you're actually, you need to add some fabric to the bottom to do that. The easiest thing to do for uh, jeans is after a while, you just want it to be straight lines going straight down. And then when you do your rolled hem, you don't have to do any adjustments to the seam allowance. What I want to do is I want to come over here and I want to look at my mock-up. And I can see I rolled the pants up to fit right at her ankles. And now I put a red mark on there and I can unroll this and find this measurement. Now the measurement I'm seeing here is for me, I want to take away an inch and one eighth for my perfect jean fit. So now here on my jeans, I took off an inch and an eighth. I need to erase all this extra information, and then I also need to make the same change to the back. So now I made the adjustment here to my front and my back, and I changed the arrowhead for the grain line coming right down to that. Now there's one last thing I want to do is I want to straighten out the leg just for this last four inches. So then when you come in down in here and you start to do a hem, or even if your girl wants to roll her pants up, at least they're just rolling up and down on a straight line. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the change here to my front first. And once you've made the change here, it's pretty simple, you'll know exactly what to do on the back. I'm gonna tape this down to the tabletop so it doesn't move. All right, so from the bottom of the ankle, measure up four inches. And then come across and make a mark here at the side seam and a mark here at the inseam. And go ahead and circle those now. Okay, so now measure from the grain line out to that circle at the side seam. And it's gonna be a really weird measurement and make sure you get the exact measurement. So for me, it's three and a sixteenth and a little bit past that sixteenth. And I'm gonna come straight down to the ankle and I'll get that same measurement here. Then I, I want to erase any of this line in between here now what I can do is I'm going straight down to that location. Basically, I'm parallel with the grain line, or if you look at your matrix dots, I'm just following along with my matrix dots coming down. Now I wanna do the same thing on the other side. Keep in mind, it's gonna be a different measurement because we used a different curve on the inseam and a different curve on the side seam. I can come over here, get that location. I'm gonna erase the old side seam and then I'm gonna connect these two new locations. And I'm also making sure it's totally square, parallel with the grain line, square with the ankle. Now the two new dots that we just put on here, we have a straight line going to them and a straight line going away. There's a slight corner right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase a good two inches right in that area. And then I can bring the straight edge of my very form curve in down here at the ankle. And I can move this curve along until I have a really clean blend going from the straightaway back into the original curve of the side seam. And I'll flip this over and I'll do the same thing for the inseam. So basically what we've done now is the last four inches of your pants are straight. So later on, when you do your double rolled hem, you're just gonna roll your hem straight up and hem it. Also, like I was saying, if your girl wants to cuff her jeans 
or do some kind of a rolled at the bottom of, of her jeans, then you'll know for that, that little bit right there, it's just a nice, easy, straight line. What we need to do now is since we've added at the bottom ankle, we need to add a little more paper to add our seam allowance back into here. And then we'll also get our seam allowance depending on however wide you want to do your hem at the bottom. When I took a look at these right here, the hem is a uh, half of an inch. So basically you'd have a double rolled hem. The first half inch is the second fold. The second half inch is going to be the raw edge. So let's add some paper to this. We'll add our seam allowance. We'll finish cutting everything off and then we'll do the same thing to the back. All right, so down in here I've added my new seam allowance to the inseam and side seam. And then I have a double half inch rolled hem at the bottom here, and that's my raw edge. Okay, so taking out the back, I added paper to both of the sides. I measured up four inches from the ankle, and I came out to the inseam and the side seam. I made a dot and circled it. And then from those two dots, I went straight down to the new ankle on both sides, making sure that it's perfectly square and parallel with the grain line. Now I have a little bit of a corner right here in this area. So I'm gonna erase it for a few inches. And then again, with my very firm curve, the straight edge is down here by the ankle. I can come in here and re-blend this curve so it's nice and clean. Now I can add my seam allowance, plus I'm gonna draw in my half inch fold for the hem and another half inch for the raw edge. And now I just wanna come in here and double check. So I'm putting my inseams together at the notch, making sure it matches all the way down to the ankle. And then I'll move over to the side seams And again, I'm making sure everything's matching perfect. At this stage now, all of your pattern pieces are ready to cut in final fabric. Something that I wanna do though, is I wanna finish my mock-up and do one last fitting with my client. Okay, let's talk about what we're gonna do here. So for the mock-up, we're not gonna be able to add fabric to down here in the